puff pastry made from scratch is buttery, flaky, and delicious. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make it at home. I know you guys think it's the most intimidating thing ever, but it really is simple. You just need to know the technique. The first step in making puff pastry, you need to weigh out your flour. You wanna be really accurate here. So I'm going to weigh out one pound of all-purpose flour. You want to use a flour that has a lower gluten content. You don't wanna use bread flour here because gluten creates structure and stiffness in a dough, and that's not what we're looking for. We want something that's light and flaky and airy. So all-purpose flour is what I'm using here today and I'm almost at one pound, 16 ounces, which for my friends elsewhere is 458 grams of flour. I also have one pound of European style butter. European style butters have a higher fat content, even better for puff pastry. So if you can find that, do that. Add this to the bowl of a stand mixer here with a paddle attachment. And this butter is chilled. And to this, I'm gonna add a half cup of the flour that I just measured out. What I'm doing here is creating the butter component that's going to be eventually layered into the dough, which gives you that flaky puff pastry. Mix this together on low speed until it's just combined. We're not creaming this. We don't want to create a lot of air. We don't want this light and fluffy. We just want the butter mixed in with the flour. And while this is mixing, take the remaining amount of flour and to this you're going to add two and a half teaspoons of coarse salt and just mix this up slightly. And I'm gonna set this aside with my cream here, the last ingredient. I'm gonna take this out. Take your butter and scrape it out onto a sheet of plastic wrap. And this is our little butter packet that will eventually be layered into our dough. Now take the plastic wrap and use your fists here to compress it into a nice disc. You want to create a five inch square and it should be, I would say an inch in thickness, maybe even a little bit bigger than that, but you want a nice even square. If you're working in a hot kitchen, what you should do is you should wrap this up and get it right into the refrigerator. You don't want this to become too warm. If you see that the butter maybe isn't worked into all of the corners and it's not a perfect square, you can take your rolling pin and roll it right in the plastic wrap and it really helps to compress it into a nice uniform shape. Again, if it's too warm, this can go right into the refrigerator and it can chill for up to 30 minutes. You don't want it to be too, too cold, otherwise it'll be too hard. So while that is chilling, I'm going to make the dough component. So I have the butter component, now I need the dough component. I'm going to take a clean mixing bowl, the flour mixture that I had, which is the remaining flour with one and a half teaspoons of salt. Again, using a paddle attachment here. Turn your mixer on low speed. Most recipes call for water in making the dough for the puff pastry, but I'm using heavy cream today. And what this does is it adds an extra amount of fat, which makes the overall dough that much richer. So I have one and a half cups here. As the mixer's running, I'm gonna slowly drizzle in the heavy cream. And you want this to create a shaggy dough. So you might not need all of it. The recipe is about one and a quarter cups of heavy cream to one and a half cups. It really depends on the humidity that day, how much you will need to add to your flour. And I think I'm gonna have to add all of it here. So. As you can see, the dough's coming together. It's a shaggy dough. It's not super, super wet. And now I'm going to just use my hands to bring this dough together. So, I mean, seriously guys, four ingredients. It didn't take me that much time to make the butter and the dough here. I'm gonna put this just onto my work surface and make sure it's all combined. Now you don't wanna work the dough too much because you don't wanna develop the gluten too much. Okay, so you can see the dough is semi-cohesive. It's a little cracked in areas. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in some plastic wrap here and just to get that square shape, because I need this to become ultimately a rectangle, I'm gonna use the plastic wrap to my advantage here in compressing the dough and creating or starting to create a rectangular or square shape 
Okay. So again, I'm gonna do my little folding of the plastic up and over, flip, and I'll use my rolling pin to really compress this into a nice rectangle, forcing the dough together. Now it is a dry dough, guys, but that's okay, because we're going to layer this with so much butter. So this looks nice. It's in a nice rectangular shape. My butter is ready to go. So these go right into the refrigerator. You want to chill them for about 30 minutes. Now, keep an eye on them. You want the same consistency. If this is a little too soft and it's not the same texture, then the butter goes in the fridge. Vice versa, guys. So I'm going to chill these just slightly in the fridge. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. They're the same texture. Again, that's the most important part. I'm going to lightly dust my work surface with flour, unwrap the dough, and you're gonna place this right on the surface. Now save your plastic wrap. Do not throw this away because you can use this later. Unwrap your butter packet here. And now this butter packet is gonna go in the lower portion of your dough. So I'm working with the short end towards me. So the dough is kind of lengthwise. Take your butter and place it right in the bottom of the dough here. Flour my hand slightly, and you're gonna take the dough and you're gonna fold it right over the butter packet. All you're gonna do here is you're going to pinch the dough together, encasing the butter in between two layers of dough. Because once we begin rolling, we don't want any of that to get smushed out. So seal it up well. And now I'm going to flip the dough over and I'm going to begin the first rolling and the first turn, which sometimes this process is what intimidates people, but it really shouldn't be. So work on a well-floured surface, use your rolling pin, and you're gonna roll this out to a 20 by nine inch rectangle. So pretty big, you need a, a decent sized work surface here, guys. Now, what is gonna happen if the butter is too soft? Well, the butter is gonna come right out the sides. So you wanna make sure that it is at that proper temperature Let's see what we got here. Okay. So I'm looking for a 20 by nine rectangle. When you're rolling out the dough, you wanna keep it as rectangular as possible. So you might need to pull the corners out slightly. You can do that just by pinching the dough out. And this is looking like it's a little short of 20, a little wider than nine. So you can bring the sides in slightly. I'm gonna roll this out a little bit more. And there you go. So 20 by nine. And now for the first fold. What I like to do, I like to flip the dough, rolled side on the bottom, and then you're going to do what is called a tri-fold. So you're gonna bring the dough down a third of the way, just like that. Any excess flour, you can just take a brush and wipe that off. And then you're gonna bring the bottom up over what you just folded, right? So that is considered a tri-fold. Flip this over. Give it a pat so it's nice and even. And now wrap this in plastic wrap and this should go into the refrigerator. You want this to set up and be firm. You don't want this to be too, too warm. Now that could take anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. Again, you don't want the dough ice cold. Otherwise the butter layers are going to shatter when you roll them out, but you don't want it too warm. So I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator. I'll check it in about a half an hour and see if it's ready. All right, so this has been in the refrigerator for about a half an hour. Again, liberally dust your work surface with flour and the top of your dough. As you can see, the dough is, it's not too firm. I can take my thumbs and I can really press into the dough and it leaves about a quarter of an inch indentation. That's really what you're looking for, guys. Don't get hung up on the times. And now I'm gonna roll this again into a 20 by nine inch rectangle. And we're gonna repeat this rolling and folding process several times and ultimately you're going to layer the dough or laminate the dough so many times, creating over 700 layers of dough. So this is my second turn. I'm gonna do this about five more times. And if the dough is still cold enough, you could do one more turn right now. So we're done with the process. It's been uh, maybe like two hours here, guys. And I just wanna show you what this final dough looks like. Now, this batch makes over two pounds of dough, like two and a half pounds of dough. So you can use this in many different ways. I'm just going to portion it in half and you can see how many layers, microscopic layers here, you guys. I'm gonna wrap this up, put it in the fridge and save it for later, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like baked and how puffy and delicious it is. 
So here is some of the puff pastry that I've baked off before. You can see it's nice and golden brown. Again, that heavy cream really adds richness and adds a lot of color. Now I'm going to just cut into one of these guys because I want you to see how flaky and delicious these are. You hear that crunch? It's kind of amazing. Now you can use puff pastry in so many different ways, you guys. You can bake them off. Look at those beautiful layers. Look at that airy texture. That is perfect puff pastry right there. It's not that hard to do, you guys. It's only four ingredients. You need a little bit of time, and of course, with anything, a little bit of practice. But you have the recipe and the technique now. As always, guys, enjoy. Enjoy.